welcome to the Courageous Self-Care Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Marlette. On the show, we talk about self-care that goes so far beyond what most people think about self-care. And I've been examining this over the last few years, and although it's super helpful to listen to it on a podcast and to take courses and to gather online, <clears throat> it's also so valuable to gather together in community. Human beings really need to connect face to face. And so I thought, based on that really important information, what can I do about that? And I was meditating one day and I had this download to create an event. And so I've done that. I'm pushing the boundaries of my courage. And I've created what is called the Courageous Self Care Festival. And that's how it has to be said. It's not just a festival, it's a festival. <laughs> and <laughs> so what I've done is uh, I've invited all sorts of speakers and vendors who are aligned with self-care. We're going to be hosting this incredible day later this fall in November in Calgary, Canada. If you are not anywhere close to Calgary, Canada, not to worry. I have, because the speakers are so amazing, I thought, how could I share them beyond the festival? And so I decided, oh, I could put them on my podcast so everyone can benefit. And so I have one of our incredibly talented speakers today with me, Candice McKim. Candice, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited for the festival. It's going to be amazing. I know. I'm so excited too. Yesterday, I booked a face painter. Oh, I know who does beautiful art on people's faces. So now it's truly a festival. (laughs) Love it. Love it. Love it. So Candice, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you have been up to recently. Um, I'm Candice McKim, and I am the author of the book, Yogini's Guide, Intuition is a Choice, as well as I created a deck of oracle cards, um, Yogini's Guide to Intuition Oracle Cards. Um, I'm an intuitive coach, uh, a facilitator of workshops, trainings, and retreats. But my background is I have a degree in social work, and then I became a yoga therapist, and I combined the two into a form of counseling that really embodies body, mind, and spirit, like bringing it all together. That is so cool. I love that. that and I, I know that your work is super powerful. I know your clients are so happy to be with you. And I feel like it's so important to use intuition as a springboard for personal development and uh, soul expansion. So I love that you're doing that. Thank you. I'm excited. Yeah. So um, using that as a basis and moving on, what, what are you going to be sharing at the festival and why is it important to you? I am sharing a new workshop. I normally uh, teach Intuition as a Choice workshop, but this festival, I'm bringing a new workshop. It's called Women and Worth, Wealth and Wellness. So I'm going to say it again, Women and Worth, Wealth and Wellness. And this is actually the name of my next book. I'm in the process of writing this new book. And I think it's just such an important time for women to really connect to themselves, to connect to um, all the hats that they're wearing and, um, and how we can bring some worth to it. You know, there's so much going on all around the world about women rising up. And I think it's just such an important issue. It's um, these four words really um, inspire people. Um, It inspires me and it inspires most people. Um, But really bringing the worth to the feminine and to what women are doing. And not that, so not so that we have to move into a masculine energy, but we can maintain our feminine energy, maintain ourselves as women, but really see the worth in what we're doing um, in our households, in our communities, and in the entire world, and how important it is. And so that we can also recognize and identify our wealth. It's not just, you know, in our patriarch- patriarchal society, we, um, we measure wealth by how much money you're making. But we know we're gaining so much wealth, and our, and our families are gaining so much wealth by all of the things we're doing. But yet, at the same time, we have to do it in a place of wellness. So the self-care is so important because we can burn ourselves out um, faster than anybody, <laughs> right? Yes. And so it's so important to um, maintain our wellness through it all as we're rising up and really you know, following our intuitive goal or intuitive, um, intuitive guidance into our purpose. 
and really claiming our purpose and saying that this is who I am, this is what I'm offering the world and knowing how important it is and the worth of it and then so that we can uh, generate wealth and stay connected to our wellness and sustainability. Oh, the power of the four W's. Yes. And the fifth <laughs> is wisdom. Ah, yes. <laughs> The wisdom of it all. <laughs> yes. Well, while you were speaking, Candace, I was just getting waves and waves of goosebumps, which I call truth bumps. And it's, you're speaking the same language that I love to talk about, like how it's so important to embrace our feminine energy and there's nothing weak about it. We've been programmed to think that feeling our emotions and um, following our intuition, going with the flow can be perceived as weak and scattered and not thought, not well thought out, but those are all strengths that we have. And I love how you're putting it into a very straightforward, easy to understand framework that we deserve to be wealthy and well and tune into our wisdom while we are being women. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, exactly. And and it's for the everyday woman. Like we, so often we get stuck in jobs and careers and household situations or relationships that aren't serving our highest good. They're not feeding our soul. They're killing us essentially. Mm -hmm. And we feel so shut down and so disconnected. And so this workshop and all of my work is really about seeing the truth of it, seeing that this isn't for fulfilling. This isn't my soul's purpose and I need to step away from it. I need to, to move towards um, what my purpose is and showing up in the world the way I want to show up and to do it and, and not to get shamed or ridiculed or confronted because we want to do that, to really own our power and, and feel that empowerment. Mm, so important. And I mm -hmm. can feel from your energy, how engaged in these ideas that you are and that you're really helping people take the strides, whether they're giant leaps or baby steps or anything in between to make that happen for themselves. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Every day, yeah. <laughs> every day we have to move <laughs> towards it. Yeah. So this is called the Courageous Self-Care Festival. And I feel that courage is involved in self-care almost every, if not every single time we make a decision to care for ourselves. I'm curious what you define self-care as for you, Candice. Um, for me, self-care means doing, living on program, if you will. So doing all those things that really make me um, stay healthy and able to keep moving forward. So exercise is huge. Um, I, I'm a yoga therapist, so of course getting on my mat every day going for a walk in nature, getting outside. Um, also diet and drinking lots of water is really important to me. Taking a deep breath to relax our central nervous system is a part of my everyday. Um, rest is huge for me. I actually, I am a night owl, and but thankfully I'm married to somebody who likes to get to bed on time. <laughs> so, you know, when I'm really off program, I, I, that's one of the first things I do is I, I go to bed at a decent time. And then meditation. Meditation is a non-negotiable for me. I've been meditating since I was 13 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, my mom was actually prescribed Valium. And so instead of Valium, because she was a stressed out mother of three teenagers, she took our whole family to learn to meditate. So those are the, the main things, though I still will get off program, you know, like everybody else does. Um, so one of the, the, the really the most important things, I use affirmations to change all the negative self-talk and the limiting beliefs and uh, having an intuitive coach is essential. And I really believe if you're going to uh, talk the talk, you need to walk the walk. So as an intuitive coach, I have my intuitive coach myself and I talk to her every two weeks. Mm. And so it just gets me back on program and uh, gets me back into doing all those things that I know will help me create some sustainability and to move through fear and discomfort. I know the next part is about courage, right? And it's scary. Like spirit wants you to step out of your comfort zone. Yes, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> you said so many um, things that we could talk for hours about, but we're going <laughs> to, in the interest of keeping this brief, we're going to, um, well, I'll just, touch on one of them. So no two things. I love how you 
brought harmony between the external self-care that you were talking about, the exercise, the nutrition, the things we do on the outside, and then the internal, the affirmations, the um, following your intuition, being okay with being uncomfortable. And that's what courageous self-care is actually all about. It's finding harmony between external self-care practices and internal. And I think often the internal are ignored or we don't even know about them. And that's what actually helps us move the needle. Like if we're struggling to exercise on a regular basis, there's something going on on the inside that needs to be shifted because Mm -hmm. our bodies are designed to move. It's supposed to be joyful. It's supposed to feel amazing. We're supposed to recognize the benefits, but if we just can't get ourselves to do it, we need to work on the inside too. So that was really powerful. And then I also loved how you said that you have a guide, a coach. It's so important for everyone to understand that we are not meant to do this alone. The best self-care happens in community, being supported by someone else, having someone else's vision that's for you, that's even bigger than you can imagine for yourself. Those are so valuable. And Mm -hmm. I love that you walk the talk. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, well, actually just in the last few weeks, I've really found myself doing the exercise, but not really being into it, like really being lame with it. <laughs> like I get on my mat and I'm like, I don't want to be here and going for a walk, but barely doing it. Yeah. And I was like, what is going on? Like, what is happening? And like you said, you're, you know, you know, it's, there's something going on mentally, yeah. physically, you know, spiritually. And so to actually get myself back into exercising and to, <laughs> it sounds silly, but the first thing I do is start drinking more water. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not funny, but just by drinking more water and making that commitment to myself, then I'm like, oh, right. Then I, it, it just brings some consciousness to it. So yeah. then I'm more conscious about what I'm eating. And then I'm like, oh, right. Now it's time for me to go for my walk and I'm going to really enjoy this. And I don't know, it was just the first thing to do. And then of course, affirmations and, and journaling and all of those things for your mind. Right. I love it. This is yeah. all fantastic information. You listeners are so lucky. (laughs) All right. So now shifting into the courageous part of the interview, what's something that you can share with us that not a lot of people know about you? Well, I've had, um, a, I had a very, uh, crazy experience this summer actually, where I really had to be courageous. I was out for a walk because I do that and I live in the country and, um, but I live in a subdivision, so there's houses by. And so I was going for a walk, um, in June and I just had my cell phone with me and I was listening to, um, Brené Brown, Braving the Wilderness. So I took my headphones off and I was walking along and so I took my headphones out and was wrapping up my, um, my headphones and I was walking along and I heard a noise. And I looked over my right shoulder and there was a black bear. Oh oh my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) And so I ran, started running. And then in my head is like, stop running, stop running, stop running. So I stopped running and I turned and the bear ran away from me in um, the ditch, in the bush. So it was completely between me and the bear or my road, my escape route. And so, and I didn't know if there was a mother bear. And so I immediately went into survival instinct and I was waving my arms and yelling. And so then the bear came out of the bush and it looked at me and it stood up on its hind legs and looked at me. And while I did that, I was waving my arms and yelling. Um, I went up onto my tippy toes and leaned towards the bear, Mm -hmm. yelling louder and making myself bigger. And you know, I have always told my clients to lean into their fear, Mm. but now I have a very clear analogy (laughs) of leaning into your fear. And so the bear went down, went back into the bush because actually she, she was, she was afraid actually of me. And so I continued to yell. I phoned my husband and then the bear did come back up onto, um, like onto the clearing and ran across the clearing and into the bush. My husband got there. He waved to me to come towards him. And I walked towards him yelling and waving. And um, we found out later that there actually wasn't a mother bear, but that's what we were afraid of. Right. So, but, so I was very, you know, (laughs) a lot of fear. Um, Somatically, my body went into shock. I had to do a lot somatically and work through that. But like, as I said, it was that leaning into your fear. And I tell my clients all the time to lean into their fear and to, 
and I was listening to that book, <laughs> Brave in the Wilderness, yeah. <laughs> which she talks about this as well. So, you know, I had to be very, um, uh, you know, of course I was very, very afraid, but since then, even just noticing, um, the, the post-traumatic stress disorder of it all and the, the somaticness of it and like getting jumpy and, and breathing through it and, um, and really finding the courage to keep, to keep going on. And, and, and what it told me, I, I really believe in signs and messages yeah, all the time. Of course. And so for me, it was a sign to, um, to go inside and to spend some time on writing and, um, and doing that. And I, I feel like I'm still in that place at this point in time, working on my book, this next book. And that's a fantastic yeah. story. And I think it is hilarious and so serendipitous that you're listening to Braving the Wilderness. There were so many, there were so many things that happened in that experience. Actually, it was a whole day of things that happened that it's almost like taking it apart and defining it. Like my husband came in his white truck. Um, while I was walking, like, and walking back to my husband, I found a hawk feather. Like, it was just, oh it was great. It was, it was spirit was right there in front of me. Right. Like, and when she went up on her hind legs at, to look at me, she was completely black. But right at her heart chakra was a, a circle of caramel colored. Oh my and God. it was like this bullseye right to the heart. And yeah, so I'm still uncovering it. I'm still um, meditating on all the aspects of that day, which is going to be coming out in this next book. But it's, yeah, it was, it was bizarre. It was, it was wild. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And amazing. And I feel like it was such a gift. As yeah. scary as it was, I just knew instantly it was a gift. Right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That is, yeah, almost beyond description. But you I know. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so uh, a lot of people listening are listening from all over the world and are going to be nowhere near our incredible festival. So uh, I know they're still going to want to connect with you online and you have all sorts of programs and services that you do with, um, without needing to be there in person. So where can people get a hold of you, Candice? Um, I have an email or, an e yeah, my email address is info at candicemckim.com. My website is, can, is uh, CandiceMcKim.com. And then I have another website. It's Candice-McKim.MikaJobby.com. Uh, Great. And I'm going to be offering the description. Yeah. 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 And then you've got something that's available on your website as a gift. Yes. So I'm offering a meditation. So it's on, it's on the, the link that I've given to you. Um, as I said, I believe meditation is just absolutely an important part of our every single day. It's a non-negotiable for me. So meaning a non-negotiable that I do it every single day. The other things are high priority, so I might not do them every day, but they're, you know, but the meditation is, is there every day. So yes, I'm offering a free guided meditation. That's so generous of you. And there's so much of your experience and wisdom and intuitive energy packed into this meditation. So make sure if you're listening to this, that you do go ahead and get that gift because you're listening for a reason. And uh, it's important to take embodied action when gifts are being offered to you. And in this case, embodied action means moving your fingers and hands around <laughs> to be able to download that gift. So please do that. Um, for the festival, we are creating swag bags for the first hundred people. And I'm getting our guests on the podcast to share what is going in because the ideas have just been so creative and I'm so excited for these swag bags. So what are you putting in there, Candice? I'm offering, a, it's a card, it's a postcard, um, but it's an offer for a free online or telephone um, intuitive oracle card reading using my deck of Yogini's Guide to Intuition Oracle Cards. And so it's a half hour session and they, all they have to do is text um, a number that we've got on the card and then we'll text you back with the link to just go ahead and book your session. So awesome. What a great gift. Oh, lucky swag bag recipients. And then um, you're also offering a prize at the festival. Do you want to share about that? Yes. I'm offering a signed copy of my book, Yogini's Guide, Intuition is a Choice, as well as a deck of my Oracle cards and uh, along with a 60 minute online intuitive coaching session with me. And it can be a personal coaching session or a business coaching session. So and we can do generous. Cards in there as well. Sorry. 
That's fine. That's so generous. And uh, uh, the vendors are all contributing to the swag bags. The speakers are doing prizes and swag bags. And uh, we've got thousands of dollars worth of prizes. So if you are anywhere near Calgary <laughs> near on uh, November 17th, it's going to be worth your while to attend. You can hear Candace speak. Our other speakers are all amazing. It's going to be hard to choose. And uh, our wellness marketplace, we've got a passport to wellness where you go and get to connect with the vendors. It's not just um, looking at tables of stuff. It's really creating authentic connection. And then there's prizes based on who goes through the passport and completes it. It's going to be amazing. And as a thank you for listening to this podcast episode, I would love to offer you a complimentary ticket. So you can go to selfcareticket.com and you can attend the festival as my gift to you. Make sure you take action on that too. Candice, thank you so much for sharing who you are and your energy and your wisdom today. I'm so grateful to have you as part of the festival. Thank you. Yes, I'm super excited for the festival. And wow, that's very generous that the listeners get a ticket. Just I know. To, it's worth even come. traveling awesome. from around the world. <laughs> yeah. So that's amazing. They just have to get their flights. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for listening. You can give yourself a check mark, a gold star, a pat on the back for tuning in today. This does count as courageous self care. I am grateful to have you here in our sphere of energy where we are promoting and encouraging women to step up and prioritize your own well being because not only do you benefit, there's nothing selfish about it, everyone in your immediate circle benefits. And you send an energetic ripple around the world, causing more women to stand up and say, I am worthy. I deserve to take care of myself. I deserve some time to figure out what I love to do. And I deserve to own my gifts and share them with others. So you're doing not just yourself a great service by practicing self-care, but also affecting the energy on the entire planet. Thank you for listening. I look forward to connecting with you again. Bye-bye for now.